Good evening. Well, a completely different day from yesterday. At last, Melbourne had some rain. It started around mid-morning and persisted through most of the day. We ended up with a total of 18 millimetres up until 5 o'clock. It's the first decent rain we've had since 10, since 10 millimetres on the 1st of December. The satellite shows the band of cloud across our state. Here are the rain totals to 9 this morning. 57 millimetres at Colac was the highest recorded. The reason why we had such high totals was because the rain band took an exceptionally long time crossing the state. Since 9 o'clock there have been reasonable falls through central Victoria, including 22 millimetres at Castlemaine and Laverton. The rain band is moving out to the east now and is likely to produce similar totals there. There are still some showers down in the southwest to come through. On the pressure pattern we can see the cold front that brought last night's change, but the cooler southwesterly winds are still not through eastern Victoria. So while temperatures were much cooler across the state, it was still very, very hot in the Far East, 38 at Wodonga and also Orbost. In Melbourne, the low was 19 and a half at 20 past 8 and the top 20.2 before the rain at 5 past 9. At the moment, it's 19. Now here's tomorrow's chart and it shows we'll still be in the cool onshore airstream. Interstate, it'll be fine in Perth and Adelaide, a few showers in Hobart, rain and thunderstorms in Canberra. For us, there'll still be rain and isolated thunderstorms in the east, but clearing tomorrow, and any showers left in the south will become isolated by the morning. In Melbourne, we'll have a few showers or drizzle periods tonight and tomorrow morning, but clearing in the afternoon with breaks of sunshine. The low tonight, 13, and the top tomorrow, 21. And looking to the weekend, fine on Friday with cloud in the morning and sunshine in the afternoon and a top of 22. Fine with a little more sunshine and 25 on Saturday and fine, sunny and up to 31 on Sunday. So gradually warming up again, Brian. Thank you, Karen. The end and a sad end to a terrible two days of fires. We all have heartfelt sympathy for those who suffered and praise for those who fought so hard to save lives and homes. We can only hope it doesn't happen again. Good night. Thanks for joining us. We're here in the Dandenong Ranges outside Melbourne. And this is the house where three people lost their lives in yesterday's firestorm. A young married couple died in the cellar when the blazing floor above collapsed on top of them. And then late today, a third body was found, thought to be a woman neighbour who sought refuge with the young couple. And here's the tragic irony in all of this. It's been raining here nearly all day. We've been shivering in temperatures of 17 degrees down from 40 degrees yesterday, where this place was like the inside of a blast furnace. If only the rain could have come 24 hours earlier. Altogether, 44 homes were burnt to the ground yesterday, and many of the residents got out just in the nick of time with nothing more than the clothes they were wearing. And Rachel Friend has spent the day with some of those who are now trying to pick up the pieces. Start cleaning this up. I've asked myself that a hundred times. Where do you do this stuff? Do you pick it up and put it somewhere else, or do you just do what I do, walk away, come back later? For many of the residents of Fernie Creek and the Dandenongs, this morning was a haze of confusion, devastation, and emotion. The fire which ravaged the ranges yesterday left almost nothing in its wake. Some were luckier than others, but all were shell-shocked, unable to fully fathom what was left of their street and their lives. Ray Crummins remained with his property as the fire tore up the mountain. It was a decision which saved his home. Sure, that's all I sleep, but I've got nothing to pay the bills with. That's it. He lost his livelihood, more than $100,000 worth of stock. 
the child controller push five with a basic, basic hat is ludicrous. Uh, he did well? He did well. He really, he really did well. The ferocious fire that ripped through the Dandenongs yesterday left many people asking themselves the same question. Their predicament made all the more frustrating by the suggestion that these fires were deliberately lit. Young kids especially, I mean, they just don't understand the, the devastation that they caused. Jody Wallace returned to the remnants of his home with his eldest son, Ben. We just pulled out what, what we could see. Um, but, uh, you know, we've lost a lot of uh, very, very uh, valuable and sentimental things. Because I don't want to live in some other house. I want to stay in my house. You know, there's probably three years um, both sweat and tears down the drain here. But, you know, we'll, we'll get through. That's fine. You know, we'll, we'll go off. Yeah, it's really good. For the dirt and the ash, though, is it? <laughs> For many families, it's literally now a case of starting over, right from the very bare essentials. It's weird not any... <laughs> Rob and Anne-Marie Shu fled from their home with just the clothes on their backs. As every hour of the day goes on, I suddenly realise I have no makeup, I have no shampoo and stuff like that. We went out and bought toothbrushes at about midnight last night.